Okay, so hi class, so welcome back. And now we're going to talk about subjective culture. So in our previous lesson, we were able to discuss about um, culture and communication too. Now we are going to talk about subjective culture. All right, so for our lesson today, we are going to talk about the iceberg mo model of culture, building blocks of culture, and also the Hofstig's cultural dimensions, which, in which includes power distance, masculinity, femininity, uncertainty, avoidance, and also individualism, collectivism, uh, that will also be your homework. But don't worry, we will not going to uh, have the homework for that. All right, so now let's look at this picture. So this is what we called the iceberg model of culture. So as you can see at the top, so as we all know, in the iceberg, it's always um, there's always a bigger picture behind every small, um, small, small thing. So there's always a bigger picture to describe it. Like in the in the picture in here, if you can, yeah, this one. So this one um, is like just the tip of the iceberg. And then below is actually a more sense about what's about the picture at the top. So as you can see here, for example, you can see at the top of the icebergs are, are fine arts, literature, drama, classical music, popular music, folk dancing, games, and cooking and dress. And dress. While on behind of those um, uh, beautiful uh, things that we can observe, from the outside is actually a notions of modesty, conception of beauty, cosmology, relationships with animals, uh, arrangement of physical space, attitudes towards the, the dependent, um, behavior, kinship, uh, relations to status by age, sex, class, occupation, kinship, and so forth. So, in simple terms, the iceberg model of creature um, is... Um, focuses uh, on the tip is actually focuses on the awareness okay it, it, it uh, that's why it's visible it can be seen because it it is uh, primarily in awareness however at the uh, base of the iceberg as you can see the bigger portion or below the sea is actually uh, is the one that is out of our awareness okay so that's why I keep on saying that um, we cannot judge someone based on a single test, based on a single um, action or behavior. Because there's always a story behind that. So the culture that we have here in Philippines actually has a lot of story to tell. Okay? There's a lot of stories to tell. Like for example, our, um, our what they call this, our pamahiin or our belief system or our beliefs actually does... Um, tells a lot of stories okay so like um, like what we call this we have this chanak okay uh, chanak is um, it's a pamahian or it's a cre uh, it's a scary creature that can be heard and found in the provinces okay so actually um, it's a it is something that's scary and it has been a, um, a, an issue during or stories to tell during the Halloween. However, there's actually a story behind that, a, a, a very large picture behind that. Actually, uh, before, since um, our country, especially those who are living in the provinces, are believed to be, uh, women are believed to be, um, what to call this, conservative, compared to those who are living in the Manila before. Okay, so that's why if they got pregnant, I mean, those who are in provinces got pregnant, uh, there were there were stories behind that they they ought to um, abort the baby. Okay, and then because of the abortion, some of their conscience actually hear some baby cryings at night and it hunt them. So most of the people are, yes, most of the people in the provinces believes that um, there is a crying baby, and if that crying baby is a, uh, can be heard at night, it means that um, it's the chanak or the uh, aborted baby, okay? And it's co it comes for revenge or something, or it, it's crying for help or something. So as you can see there, our chanak or what they call this, um, yes, 
the the aborted baby came from a different or a big story there's a big story to tell with that so awareness in in that uh, in that uh, simple story is the existence of Janak. how how about uh, and then outside of the awareness was actually the story behind that Janak. so in simple terms that could explain what iceberg model of culture is all about all right <coughs> excuse me now let's go and talk about the building blocks of culture so our culture actually starts with beliefs that's why it's it was also my example a while ago so what are actually beliefs these are assumptions about the nature the nature of something a thought about the connection between two or more concepts so like what my example a while ago actually my example a while ago was a bit scary it's about chanak okay or the aborted baby that comes to hunt you back <laughs> so um actually that's one of the beliefs that we have okay again a belief uh, also rooted or is connected to the iceberg model of culture so a belief is something that is uh, an assumption about about something okay it tells us about a story about i mean there's um there's a story about about that okay it consists of two or more concepts Okay, so again, in simple terms, beliefs is something that we believe in. We believe in, rather. And belief system, on the other hand, our beliefs are interwoven with other beliefs of different types into belief system, like Islam, Buddhism, and animism. So, uh, like in our example, so people believe that if you just have enough faith, and if you just prayed over on the uh, aborted baby, or you bless the house, or something, and etc., uh, the baby or the 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 chanak will be gone okay it will no longer roam around crying okay so that's and with that with that simple belief of chana it is now connected to our religious belief in catholics okay sometimes it's not just in catholics it happens on um uh what they call this um healers faith healers i i forgot the exact tagalog word for that but those who actually, um, I really forgot, um, manghula, I, I'm not sure, I, I don't know. They are the ones who actually tear down or have to kill a chicken and then spread the chicken's blood around the house just just to uh, release evil spirits and etc. They are the ones, that actually, that's also part of the belief system, okay? So again, beliefs, this are assumption about something. And then belief system, this is... Um, things that we do uh also um it consists of different kinds of beliefs beliefs and it forms into a belief system also just like actually that's just one example okay but we also have the universal ones like i mentioned a while ago is the islam buddhism and animism and that also includes uh catholicism and etc okay so this too are, are part of the uh, the building block of culture actually if there's a belief there's probably a culture in it okay furthermore we have the term worldview worldview is beliefs about the connections between humans and the larger elements of the universe so these are such of assumptions or cognitions about things such as purpose of humans, nature of deity, positions of humans in relation to nature, and the rest of the cosmos. So that's why, okay, worldview is actually um, our beliefs. Is, uh, our beliefs in connected to something that's bigger or larger, like for example, the universe. Okay, so actually, there's an argument before that the reason why we believe in um, we believe in God. And um, yes, there's a religion is that it can guide us to what is morally right or wrong. Okay. And to guide us to know our, our purpose in life and to actually recognize that there's a higher being. Okay. So actually that's part of the worldview. Okay. Having those kind of things is actually part of the worldview. So again, the worldview is the belief that there is a connection between us humans and to the larger beings. Okay, it's either uh, God or any other element. So it either it's either also be um, a god of uh, 
elements of God of water and etc. and etc. That's what we call world view. Okay, another one is value. Value is a type of belief that, that a thing, idea, or activity is important and should serve as a guide for behavior. This is something that is enduring and influences our behavior. So again, in simple terms, value is something that we believe in and we should uh, follow because this value is actually a guide for us. Um, so we will have a direction of what what to do, to do, okay? So in simple terms, value, this is also a belief that guides us, okay? That guides us and and influences us and our future behavior as well. So that is value. Okay, next we have attitudes. Attitudes is, um, this is uh, describe the way we relate to things, actions, or people. They are more of an emotional reaction to things, influenced by, influ in, by, by and influencing beliefs, values, and norms. So in attitudes in here, it is more on how we react on things emotionally okay and how we relate to other people and actions that is attitude so it can be influenced by our beliefs values and our norms so where uh, whenever we act on something in relation to them and also uh, especially if that act is driven by emotion okay uh, that is influenced with our beliefs that is attitudes okay that is an attitude okay so uh, again if we react on something or our behavior based on an emotion and how we relate or act toward a thing or a person uh, based on our beliefs and values and our norms that is attitudes all right now let's uh, continue we have the rules uh, rules are these are prescriptions for behavior so called these are cultural beliefs about which behaviors are appropriate in certain situations okay so rules guide us to do what is right okay so in a certain phenomenon or a certain event for example in class in a classroom there are certain rules like you have to um you have to dress appropriately appropriately when you enter the classroom by wearing of course your your complete uniform so those are rules now we also have the concept norms now what are norms these are expectations for behavior with a mor moral component so if someone violates a, a norm a, the person is seen as a bad or immoral person so for us to easy, easily remember what norms is it comes from actually the word normal so we have um, the norms is actually a definition of what is actually normal in our society. So if you, uh, if you acted according to what is normal in the society, that is norms. Okay, so these are the daily things that an, uh, an ordinary human or uh, yes, an ordinary human would do. However, if someone does differently that is a violation of norms like for example our norms whenever we go in the whole world <laughs> if you kill someone i mean if it, actually it's our norm not to kill someone but if you did kill someone that's actually the violation of a norm again normal uh, norms come from the word normal okay so if you do the opposites that's the abnormal and that means that you're violating the norm we also have the concept more. So more, if the norm is very strong with negative social results for violating it, it becomes a more. So again, um, it is actually uh, a norm that is very strong, which resulted into a negative, uh, negative that it that ne resulted in negative that it, it intends to, to, to violate it, it becomes a more. Okay, so uh, it's actually... A very strong norm with a uh, negative impact all right okay so let's now go to the other concepts like taboo so 
taboo is a cultural more so strong people do not normally even mention it okay so taboo if you're if you're familiar with it this is something that is uh, very uh, indifferent very unique and sometimes it's very um, violating if you've mentioned one that's taboo okay so that's why i mean right now we are using this uh, word as a common word like if you do not understand something or that is something that is very new to you you use this that word that uh taboo however uh taboo is actually a more that is prohibited sometimes it is prohibited to be mentioned because it's very different okay so um it is um forbidden something that is forbidden okay and then we also um Oh, let me give you an example for that. Okay, so like for example, in a, well, I, I was a graduate in a, okay, I used to, um, like me, okay, so, hmm, I, when I was in high school, I actually am part of a, a small community, wherein, it's actually part of the church, wherein sex topic is a taboo. Sometimes, because it, it is taboo, because it is contrary to what is believed in in a certain scenario. That's why it's called taboo. It is something that is, well, not intentionally prohibited. However, uh, whenever one started a topic like that, it's something that is uncomfortable and tends to uh, diverge the topic to another one because it's it's a very taboo word. Okay, so now... I hope that's clear. Now let's go to the word law. What is a law? Law is a government legaliz legalizes what one can or cannot do in terms of behavior. So it becomes a law. So if it is related to the government and what they wanted or they implemented, that becomes a law. Okay, especially if it is um, passed by the government officials. That is a law. All right. So... Um, Again, uh, taboo something that is prohibited, law that is given by the government. It, it, it was legalized by government. All right, so now let's go to the next part, which is about Hofstede's cultural dimensions. Okay, so in Hofstede's cultural dimensions, there are certain uh, concepts that we need to understand to understand actually what Hofstede's cultural dimension is. The first one is power distance. So power distance refers to whether people in a culture tend to value status differences and see it as appropriate. So as power distance increases, people in a culture, including those of lower status, are more likely to think that it is acceptable that people of different social status can be treated differently. So in simple terms, as long as you have power over someone or, or some things, um, it becomes it this uh, unfortunately there would be a distance like for example status quo so right now in our uh, in our telenovelas it is uh, very evident uh, that the rich guy will marry a poor girl and there would be uh, a conflict and then there would be um, a mother-in-law that hates the daughter-in-law and then there would be a drama <laughs> so actually in our country this is very evident power distance okay whether you're rich you're poor you're part of the government you're uh, a, a doctor you're a lawyer and etc and etc okay again power distance is the um, a part of uh, a dimension of hostage wherein it is the distance that is big due to power. Okay, we also have the concept uncertainty avoidance. And uncertainty avoidance is pertains to the overall desire for structure and predictability in a culture. So higher uncertainty avoidance cultures, pe uh, people tend to distrust things or people that violate expectations. What is strange is seen as bad. So uncertainty avoidance it, in here, it is actually, we all have a desire to be, to know the future, 
to know what what the future will bring to us okay so so actually most of us especially in our country right now if we are not sure about something we will not pursue it if we are not sure that we can do it we will not do it so in here um uncertainty avoidance is something that we we uh we do due to the uncertainty of things okay so in simple terms if something is uncertain you will avoid it okay so um actually uh, for example let's go to politicians just to give you an example if a politician is a new name something that it that has nothing or um has a very uh, unique background that is contrary to what is famous we tend to see it as strange and uh, sometimes other people seen is it as bad or not qualified okay so that's why those politicians even though they have a good background as long as it is uh, that seen uh, as strange by most people they will not vote for that politician so that example is uncertainty avoidance because people doesn't want to vote to vote rather to vote to vote on something that they are not sure of okay even us we do not pursue something that we are sure of that we can do it sometimes we have to test ourselves just to make sure that we can actually do it all right and then we all we also have uh, oh to continue to lower avoidance of uncertainty such as Scandinavian countries are often more flexible in terms of violation or expectations of expectations rather in example strangers might be more welcome and what is different might actually be seen as good okay so that's in case of Sc Scandinavian sc countries so um, so they actually see it in a different uh, different manner okay it, it's part of their culture to actually embrace uncertainty and embrace something that is strange actually they find it good so for them the more the unique you are the more that you are good okay so the more that you're unpredictable that's the the more that you're more interesting and something to be pursued at okay however in Greece the country where people scored the highest on UA or uh, yes, in, in UA, it is generally expected that citizens will hold to the Greek Orthodox religion and strangers and unusual behavior are less welcome. So countries like Greece, um, those who are, um, um, uh, are unusual are actually less welcome. Okay, so, um, so that's why uh, people, okay, so people with uh, who encountered I mean, I'm not talking uh, about the majority, but um, I'm just talking uh, of what I've observed, okay? So I, I've observed uh, well, lately that if you belong into an LGBTQIA society, uh, group, sometimes you are unwelcome, but sometimes in other groups, you are very much welcome. That's why we do have different beliefs and views on LGBTQIA is because of that, of uncertainty. Of uh, uncertainty avoidance okay and sometimes some people actually embrace it because they have lower avoidance uncertainty as you can see um, that's why in pageants um, they actually ask that question are transgenders allowed to join uh, pageants that is um, for women well uh, that's also debatable <laughs> my, my 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 statement a while ago was debatable but most of the time that that question arises in pageants because this is actually a question of whether you embrace uncertainty all right so we also have the concept of individualism collectivism so this refers to the links between the person and her of or his social connections or network rather so individualism and collectivism is actually a term that um, that focuses on the individual and within the group okay within the group that he or she connects with 
So we also have collectivist societies, wherein people rely more upon social networks, such as at, as extended family or workplace, to set goals. Uh, decisions will be made with the group in mind. So um, I'm not sure if it's sa safe to say that we are in a collectivist society because of our fam uh, because of our uh, very strong connection with our family we actually uh, some of us actually uh, still know and has a very direct connection with our um, great grandfather or great grandmother if they're still alive and some of our parents actually still connected and still know those of their um, uh, or your second cousin okay so that's a collectivist societies and however actually i've still noticed this um in provinces well though i i'm i'm not in from the province but there are certain things in the province that i can see that the decision of of a family of a one family actually affected the whole barangay i'm not sure because of if 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 the whole barangay is actually part of the family as well but but that's what i've noticed uh, like like for example if there's a wedding actually all of the barangay will help okay even the family or the couple who are getting married uh does not say that they wanted help but automatically those who are who belong in that barangay will will immediately help without being asked well i think it's good um uh, that's actually part of collectivist societies and also that's part of culture and we also have individual individualistic cultures so in here people tend to make decisions based upon personal interest and advances are on the nuclear rather than the extended family so in here individualistic cultures in here it focuses on the uh, individual his or her personal decision and will ju those who are just immediate to that person will know and can influence the decision of that person so like for example um in america okay so in america 18 years old uh children will be moving out and will be going to college and then they will just return whenever they would like to <laughs> So they're the only decisions or the only ones who would be get involved who will be involved in the decision making would be the parents. Well, the immediate parents. So your friends can help you decide. However, the most the the majority of decision would be coming from the person him him or herself. So again, individualism, collectivism, this is the collectivist society and the individualistic culture all right so that's actually the end of my discussion so again if you do have questions please let me know you can um chat in our messenger chat so thank you very much and uh, i'll be seeing you on our classes thank you bye